Hey friends, uh, it's Mr. Rogers, and today we're going to talk about the evolution of the brain. Now, this is actually a very complicated subject and obviously goes a lot into brain development and how the brain is used and um, different sections of the brain and stuff that we really don't cover in paleo, but I kind of want to give you guys an idea of how this evolution kind of took place. And it, it is very, I, I think, kind of fascinating and intriguing. Okay, so first this is a side picture of a human brain here. And you guys can see that we call it three different things. This is not truly the technical like medical terms. These are more evolutionary biology terms for the different sections. So the first thing is we have something called the reptilian brain. This is this section right here. They did not actually develop in the reptile. It was pre-reptile, but it kind of caught on the name, and that's what we call it now. We have the limbic system, which is here, and we have the neocortex up here. Now, the human brain is kind of unique. We fold our brain in. Most, hum or most animals don't have a folded brain like this. This would be straight out. So imagine if this isn't folded in, it was just straight out going this direction. Okay, um, we have a very large neocortex. We have a smallish reptilian brain compared to size, and we have a decent-sized limbic system. So, a reptilian brain are things like basic set pattern movements, instincts, uh, set pattern ooh, um, survival things like heartbeat, um, breathing patterns, stuff like that are all right here. Almost. All living organisms have some form of central nervous system that has this system right here. Now, we have this as a cerebellum that's kind of big in humans. These are set patterns. Uh, when you're doing stuff like, say, like throwing a baseball, you try to do enough practice where that is a default motion in your cerebellum where you'll never forget how to throw a baseball. The old saying is you never forget how to ride a bike once you learn. That's because if you do it enough, it gets into your cerebellum. Now, humans lack some reptilian brain compared to other animals because we don't really rely on instincts as much. We do have instincts, obviously, but um, we are learners. We, we put a lot into our neocortex. This is your memories. This is learning. This is your different areas of senses and everything like that. There, we put a lot of evolutionary power into this, and we kind of went away from instincts. So, for example, when a grasshopper is born, it isn't learning behaviors, it has instincts for its behaviors. It knows what it needs to do next. Humans, when a baby is born, it's basically just a blob of jelly and needs everything done for it. And so we have developed into a different system that makes us vulnerable at our young ages, but we can develop a pretty strong brain while other animals put a lot into their reptilian brain and then don't really need any of this stuff because what's the point? And what you find out is, especially animals that live longer, you should put more into neocortex because it's more about memory. A grasshopper doesn't really need to worry about memory. It might live more two weeks, maybe. So well, what's the use of having a memory then? Now, there's some comparable brains here, and I wanted to show you kind of the development of all of them. Um, you can kind of see the different sections. The frontal sections are thinking and thought and memory. You can see birds have a pretty big section. Mammals have a pretty big section. We can remember things. I mean, think about like your dog. Your dog has a decent memory. It remembers things that have occurred. It, it makes associations. Like my dog is scared of lightning, but it makes an association of lightning when it hears fireworks. It remembers how it feels. Uh, we have the cerebellum, which we talked about. It's part of your reptilian brain. They're default movements. You kind of see most of these organisms have something like that. It's almost like movement memory. The medulla obligata, that's your <clears throat> behaviors, more or less aggression and how you act towards that. Okay, Your pituitary gland, that's producing all the hormones that control your uh, organism. Optic tectum, which is your uh, your ability to see. It's your vision center of your brain. An olfactory bulb, that's smelling. That's smelling. So all of these are a little bit different based on what the animal is going to be doing. Now, in the video that we watched, it talked a lot about uh, the fact that the scorpions don't have these kind of complexes. And that's true. The scorpion 
they are arthropods, insects. They only have a small brain that's designed designed with um, just instincts. And honestly, their brain doesn't do a lot of even movement for them. They have these little something called segmental uh, ganglia throughout their body that almost are like mini brains that help with movement throughout their bodies. So uh, they have like a bunch of little tiny brains everywhere, which is kind of a weird thought. But that scorpion it doesn't have a memory. Everything is just based off instincts and luck. While the fish had a memory, obviously it did have some disadvantages compared to the scorpion, but it had a memory and so it can remember where it needs to go. It remembered its, the spawning pool. Um, it could learn basically and know how things were going. That's a big part of an animal. So brain development is quite interesting. Um, early animals had a lot of reptilian brain. We added some more neocortex. I forgot to really talk about the limbic system, so I'll do that real quick here. The limbic system is your emotions and thoughts. They're more complex emotions and thoughts. And we use our limbic system to help uh, deepen memories and deepen thoughts. Um, your most, uh, most accessible memories, the ones that are easiest pulling, up are things that are usually connected to an emotion like you'll always remember the day that you were the happiest like your wedding day or something like that or you might remember a sad day or you might whatever but i don't remember a random tuesday in january because nothing happened so there's no emotion to it so emotions help create memories it also kind of advances the emotions that are found in the reptilian brain the reptilian brain it's fight or flight so it's either attack or run away these can develop into different ones that kind of make it a little more complex so this is more of emotions. This is basic instincts and actions and living things. And then this is your memory and thinking and learning. So if you have a bigger this section, we consider you smart. But really what is smart, even though some animals don't have this section, their instincts make up for it. And they don't need to think through things. They know what they need to do. So it's just all about uh, perspective of the matter. So that's an evolution of a brain. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you need any help. Have a wonderful day.